playing Stormbrand and it's viable. Oh, what was that? What was that? What was it? A brother stash, dude. Oh, <laughs> oh shit. Oh, uh, fuck doctors. Kind of broke mage blood. <gasps> oh, an enlightened support. No, is that a brother stash? Is it? Is it a brother? Is it a, a brother? I mass fucked. Oh, oh, no. Is that a brother? Is that a brother? Is that a brother? Yo, guesses? Any guessers? Is this a brother? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Holy shit. Brother, brother, brother number three. Brother number three. It's crazy. I'm never leaving cemetery. We have these three, so this is just going to be normal, corrupted. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, 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 okay. I hit one. I hit one. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Now, wait. Now is when the real bets come out. All right, the first one. I want to help the believers, though. So this one's for you. <laughs> wait. <laughs> Yo, Tripolar Bear. Conqueror Maps Farming right now is actually insane. Doing these maps on Cemetery gives you so much quant, so much pack size, and so much extra rarity. We're going to talk exactly why running these maps can be some of the juiciest content that you're going to be able to run this league. And that is mainly because of these Atlas passives. So let's get in to the Atlas passives that we're going to be using for this strategy. Now, if you watch Snap Overwatch or follow the Empyrean group, you're going to notice this tree is very similar to theirs. I watched a Snap Overwatch video. I'll link it down in the, strip, uh, in the description. It's a great retrospective look at their league start. He goes over things that they did and liked, things that they didn't like, and their general strategies with all of the builds, all the POBs, even their map watch data, so you can see exactly what they dropped. And so I took the general trend of their tree for this strategy in Cemetery and whatnot. And I had adapted it to a more solo play style for non-party, right? There are going to be some things that he had in there that I don't think are going to be extremely valuable when you're just on your own, right? And we don't have all that other crazy stuff. So this is where I got the tree from. Go check out that video. It's actually a really great watch. Very well edited, very clean cut. And he goes over everything extremely precisely. I really, really appreciated that. That is some really good info. And the big information bomb. Now, I didn't notice this right away. I had no idea. Apparently, running Conqueror maps gives you 20 pack size and 20 quantity. Now, 20 pack size is kind of crazy because on a normal map, you're going to get 20, 25. Getting another 20 and another 20 quantity is already pretty crazy. All right. So that's pretty nice, right? That is really, really, really good. And you get extra influence monsters. And then you have, you know, influence items that are actually selling for a very good price. So this is why we're running Conqueror maps. Now, we'll talk about how to get Cemetery on the Conqueror maps a little bit later, but let's continue into the Atlas passive tree. Now, it might look a little bit wonky. <clears throat> it's not exactly the best pathing like you would take for an Atlas passive tree. And you're going to notice that there are a lot of single points that could otherwise be respect, but we won't want to do that because these single points like Abyssal Monster Count is really good, right? So we're going to use Abyss Scarabs Gilded. We're going to use the Abyss Sextant. Uh, you can also use the Elevated Sextant as their one exalt for 16 uses, which is actually a really good deal when you're juicing with this much stuff. Uh, but these little nodes here, right? This is actually really good. Another 30 monster pack size. Um, you're going to notice like down here, you could take these for eight increased monster pack size. Uh, there are like other small influence things, right? Influenced monster pack size. This works for hunter influence, redeemer influence, right? It's not just searing exarch influence pack size. Uh, so there's going to be some things like that. Pack size for incursions, but not taking the big ones because they don't give any quant. There's lots of like little, little, mwah, just little touches mwah, that make this tree so, so good, right? Getting all of the quants here. Uh, it's really, really nice. The one place I did change some stuff around is I didn't take the Scarab nodes because we're not using winged Scarabs and having a 10% chance to not consume my 10 Chaos Scarab. This is five points to save me one to two Chaos every map. I'd rather just have five points to take another Beyond Wheel, another Breach Wheel, right? Like 
I need more points. I already want more points. We don't have enough. I'm not taking this, right? But you would if you were doing winged. Uh, instead, we opt to take this because generally you're going to get both bosses and both bosses are going to drop 20 to 25 splinters. So an extra 50 sim splinters in every map is pretty nice alongside their jewels if you get Secrets of Suffering, which I've gotten once and it was a pretty nice one. Uh, all the other passives, it's going to be beyond stuff. It's going to be Elva stuff. Uh, Harbingers, Abysses, getting all the quantity here and the quantity around this wheel as well. And what's really important is getting the increased effect of modifiers on non-unique maps. That's why we're kind of skirting the edge here instead of taking more optimal pathing. Uh, and that's because increasing the effect of your maps, if you remember from previous leagues with all the bonuses and whatnot, actually gives you more quant and more pack size and all that good stuff. Uh, so that's really dank. And then just the quant here. Uh, if you don't have as many Atlas passives as we have here, I think some of the easiest things to drop are probably going to be the Delirium boss stuff, especially now as Simulacrums are starting to crash a little bit. Uh, the influence pack size for four points here. And then if you have to, the quantity for incursions. You know, you could drop like a couple here, right? Uh, but you really should fill out your atlas if you're trying to do super juicer strats. Uh, the next part uh, is going to be whether or not you want to do triple beyond. So triple beyond is going to be one beyond on your map, right? So we've rolled beyond on our conqueror map, which is something you're going to have to do on all of your maps, right? That's how you roll your map. You quality with chisels, right? After you scour them, you elk them all. Uh, really, you should scour binding. Bindings are like 10 to 1 right now. You can get so many bindings for so cheap, and then scours are 0.4. Uh, so really, it costs like 0.55 to roll your map if you scour binding. Uh, just do that till you hit beyond. Uh, and then make sure you don't have any other map mods on there. That would be a little bit too juicy, uh, right? Like that you can't do minus max or something if you're some self-damage build. Uh, it would be really bad, like Forbidden Right, for example. One beyond here, though. Then we get another beyond from a sextant. You could do elevated or non-elevated. I opt to do elevated because I have more money and I think it's kind of fun. And then you get 16 uses so you don't have to mess around with all this stuff. So we get another beyond there and then you could do another beyond on the map device. And this is what I did yesterday. This is going to be the stuff that you're seeing in uh, the clips in today's video. Now, uh, today I'm going to try using Fortune Favors the Brave with these notables to see how it is. Uh, because Triple Beyond is really leggy. There's a lot of monsters. And uh, maybe, just maybe, 10 pack size and 10 quant here could be better than Beyond all the time, right? Because with Fortune Favors the Brave, sometimes you're still hitting Beyond, right? Even if I hit Ritual, if I hit Harbinger, Ambush, right? Abyss, another Abyss, that would be fine, right? Uh, all of these are pretty decent, and you get pack size and quantity on top of that. Uh, so, Maybe it's going to be better than Triple Beyond. If you want to find that out, you're going to have to join the stream today. All right. Watch me on Twitch today after the video. All right. Uh, moving on. So we did Atlas passives. Let's talk about the scarabs that we're going to use and why we're going to use them. So you'll see we're running Cemetery. If you watched Snap's Overwatch's video, when I told you to earlier, you would have noticed that he mentioned Brother Stashes are very, very likely this league. Much more likely than I previously had thought. Uh, and so you'll also see in the highlight clips, I got three brother stashes yesterday in eight maps. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Now for these cemetery maps, obviously we're going to be running gilded divination scarabs. Obviously we want 115% more divination scarabs found in areas. So we're going to use those scarabs. Abysses. Abyss, when you're juicing, I think abyss is the best mechanic, uh, hands down, to add to your juice maps. With the gilded abyss scarabs, you get two extra abysses. They have 50 increased monsters. Then you're also getting extra 100% increased monsters, then another 30 from these two nodes. And remember all that pack size we're adding to our maps. Now, once we get 50, 60 pack size, we're having a 25 and 30% chance for an additional abyss on top of everything else and an extra another 30% increased monsters. Abysses are actually insane. You have to run them. Harbingers. They're fun. I got an Exalt earlier from an Exalt shard turning into an Exalt. That's pretty good. They're very dense and it keeps all the monster uh, beyond portals really close together. So you spawn all of those monsters and get more kills. All right, sick. Breaches. Breaches with fast breaches can be a little difficult. 
Uh, this one you could potentially swap out if you can't handle it for a blight plus blight pump and then you're able to build some towers and makes it a little bit easier although maybe sometimes it's a little more difficult uh, but breaches with flash breach are incredibly good not only are they much faster but you're getting so much more monster density and pack size from those breaches it's really really worth it all right so we did the scarabs next is going to be the sextants obviously we're running breaches with breach stuff we're going to do the breach one all right, abysses with abyss stuff. We already talked about it. It's going to be abyss. And then we have beyond. And I'm going to run today. I'm going to run Elva. Now, that's because I'm out of Elva missions. And because in today's maps, I'm going to be doing catalyst rewards. If I was doing skittering or cartographies, I would swap out the breach for delirium reward bars filling 100% faster. So that I get even more reward tiers. Uh, all the way up to 17, 18, and even 19, as you'll see in the video. I got at least one 19 yesterday, which was pretty cool. Uh, the thing is, for these Conqueror maps, you can self-sustain them. All it takes is Cartographer Delirium Orbs and using the 100% Delirium Faster and having Cemetery be your favored map. This will make it so that you can actually self-sustain Cemetery, specifically Cemetery Conqueror maps. Now, when I ran eight, uh, when I ran eight of these with burial chambers, the cartographer orbs, I think I had gotten it was somewhere between eight and ten or twelve burial conqueror maps. And when I ran eight of these yesterday, I had gotten six. Right, so I needed to buy two. It seems like you can self-sustain. Sometimes you get a bit, a little bit unlucky, right? But over eight maps, I got six specifically cemetery conqueror maps back. Uh, so you can almost one hundred percent self-sustain, right? And sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. I think like eventually in the end, it meets in the middle and you can. Uh, but that's with the cartography orbs. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of cartography orbs on the market. So you can just buy your cemetery maps uh, like this anyway. And I know what you're saying. All right. I know. Stop. Hold on. You're already writing the YouTube comments. Oh, Mr. Broadcaster, all the cemeteries are already too expensive. I know. I know. I've thought of everything. All right. Hush. Sweet summer child. I've thought of it all. The next thing that you can do with your Conqueror maps, all right, let's say you have a Conqueror map and it didn't become a cemetery and now you're very sad. What you can do is you can horizon orb your Conqueror map until it becomes port. Now you're getting Saint Treasure cards and port is still a really good layout. That's what you can do to still have really, really good Conqueror maps. All right, this is some real good stuff, dude. Just horizon forehead. We went over the maps. The Scarabs, uh, the Atlas Tree, I think we have hit everything, including the general strategy, right? Uh, tune in today to see what Fortune Favors the Brave is going to look like in comparison to Triple Beyond. It could be a lot better. It could be a lot less. Uh, the one last thing that I think might be a little bit meme is going to be whether or not you should use the bestiary recipes to super fill your maps. Uh, it costs about 11 to 15 chaos, I believe. Uh, each time you want to add a mod to a map. Uh, so that's 11, right? Like, let's just call it 15C, uh, depending on who has a bulk amount of beasts. Uh, that's kind of pricey for an extra mod on your map, but you are investing a lot into these maps. And if you get another huge boost in pack size, boost in quant, uh, that could be pretty good, right? If it helps you get a doctor, you know, <laughs> whatever, dude. Anyways, if you need a build for this, I should have mentioned this earlier. My Poison Helix build, is performing extremely well because this is literally what it is made to do. This build was made to comfortably farm these maps. Now, is it the fastest? No, especially not if you get some really bad mods on your map like Chaos Resistance and Monster Life. And if you don't feel like rerolling it, you're going to have a little bit slower of a map. Uh, but you know what? You're <laughs> never going to die. I'm 97. I'm level 97 at 70% experience. The only thing that kills me right now at this point is Bamath DD. All right. That's getting everybody this league. Detonate dead is the one thing that kills me. But this build, you don't even have to have any of the crazy stuff that I have, right? I've been making money, so I'm upgrading my character. But obviously, I started with less. I was doing this strategy with less. This build performs extremely well. If you need a build to do this, start as this one. Uh, my poison pathfinder helix is going to be linked in the description below and this can be a great build because it league starts as poison concoction and the entry budget to become poison helix is extremely cheap right you can get started with this strategy as soon as you have level 20 gems 
with your flasks rolled and you have the ailment duration craft and the ailment attack speed craft. All right, not ailment attack speed, uh, attack and cast speed while focused. Uh, you'll craft this. It won't be on your gear like this, right? This is just a little bit uh, more expensive of a version, right? You can get started super, super easy. And then you want to despair on hit because that's just nice, right? It's incredible. All right. Tune in to the live stream. Like and subscribe if you're making money. And I'll catch you guys later. Bye, everybody.